Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to set up WireGuard server VPN so you can connect to a server, for instance, maybe a server in the cloud, or just maybe a, you're going to try maybe to access your home, home environment uh, from, the, from the internet. I'm using a Debian uh, hosted in uh, United States. I'm currently in Europe. I'm going to connect to my goal is to access, to get an IP address from the United States. Um, by this, you can trick, for example, the Netflix that you are actually in the in the States and watch some uh, American TV shows. Uh, first thing we need to do is add the repository so we can actually install the WireGuard. This is the command to add the repository. We're going to have an sudo update. I'm not going to use sudo because I'm in the root already. After sudo update, we are going to install WireGuard. Now, this may take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, seems to be almost done here. Next step is going to be to make sure that we have we have IP tables uh, we need to have that so the server can translate the IPs to NAT and so on it's already installed which is pretty good uh, next step would be that we are going to create uh, the configuration for the server and here we're going to use the IP tables um, for we need to tell the IP tables what internet interface we are going to use uh, for the forwarding so to actually check uh, your uh, name of the interface it would the easiest would be EF config and then you can see up here it etc0 is uh, the the name or you can just use a command which is I apologize I did not copy that command which is this and it's gonna execute uh, right down here the name. So next step would be I'm gonna go into the directory of WireGuard, and I am going to create a configuration file. I'm gonna use nano as a text editor here. You can use what you prefer. Uh, now this configuration is pretty empty. We are going to copy paste in some uh, some things here. The first thing for the interface here, address. This is the address the server is going to have. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm going to use this one here. Um, the client will, will use 0 0.2 and so on and so on. Save config is forcing the configuration to be saved. This is the port. This is important to know what port you have, you're going to use here because if you, for instance, want to port forward your home network, uh, then this is the port you should be port forwarding. Uh, yeah, all right. I almost skipped one big thing, and it's we need keys. So before we go back to the configuration file, we need to uh, generate some public and private keys. I'm going to use this command to generate some public and private keys. Now, private key is something you won't actually give out so private key is as it sounds private and the public is something you will have you must have uh, in the client configuration to see the private key of the server you go ahead and type cat private key now the configuration file is ask, uh, asking us for the private key which we will paste in right here all right now keep in mind this is private so you don't want to give out this to anyone. So let's go ahead and save save our configuration. All right, um, so that's almost done there. Let's go ahead and uh, launch our WireGuard profile. We see no errors. Let's go ahead and use VG show. We can see the interface is there. If we go ahead and use IF config, we should have the IP that we mm, mentioned in the configuration 10.0.0.1 and it's down here perfect 
So next step would actually be to, uh, to tell the server that we need to forward the packets, uh, network packets. So that could be done by going in into the, let me copy paste that command to the CCCTL with none, of course. We're going to look up for something down here, which is called net IPv4 IP forward one. This is actually just basically telling the server that you're going to forward um, the traffic. And we go ahead and save that. So to apply that, we need to type a command, which is more or less uh, sudo. I'm actually root, so I have to type sudo sysctl and then p. And this is the output here. Perfect. Uh, one more thing would be to enable systemctl for this configuration. So we also have a little bit of backup when the server, if the server accidentally dies, we can always have that up and running. Okay. Um, so we have uh, done pretty much, pretty much uh, everything from the server side. Now we need to create client. Uh, we need to create a client uh, configuration file, which is uh, you will give this out to your clients when they want to connect, or just import to your WireGuard to the PC or to the phone or iPad. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to create the file on the server. Then I'm going to copy paste the configuration into the WireGuard. It's pretty easy to, to do that. Let's go ahead and call this VG1 uh, conf should be called. Now we are going to, I'm going to copy paste things in here. I'm going to tell you every detail. Uh, now the interface here, this is for the, from the client. Uh, we need to have his private key and you could use, I, I assume you could use many things to generate these keys, but I'm, I'm going to use the WireGuard on my PC. I'm going to launch my WireGuard and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to make sure this is, so this is my WireGuard and when it's empty, I'm going to go ahead and click on the add tunnel arrow, add empty tunnel. Let's see if you can see my window. Yeah. This is the public key, it's auto-generated, and this is the private key. I'm going to make sure to save this both private and public. So I'm going to make sure to copy-paste that into a notepad. So we have that in case we... Because if you delete, it's going to disappear. So it's good to just have that somewhere temporary. All right, and that was... If we go back to the configuration file, it's asking for it's asking for the client private key, which we just copy pasted. Here is private key, and this is the address we are going to assign to the client. This is the DNS server. So you can change this to whatever you want. Now we have to here we need to type the server public key. Now if we go back here and just do cat public key. This is our server's public key. Go back to the configuration file, go back to the public key. Great. And one last step is to type in the IP address of the server. Now I have my server in Linode, so I have public IP, which I'm gonna use here. Go back to the configuration file, go back to endpoint, and paste in the IP address. Now, this is pretty much it. One last thing is to actually add, uh, tell WireGuard there's gonna be a new connection from this uh, public key. And that uh, would be the command we are going to have here. I'm gonna have to change one little thing. So if we go back here, we have a command called VG set, and then we're going to set this peer to connect to the VG0 with allowed IP. This is the IP is going to get assigned, of course. And we have to use the client's, client's public key, which I have on my one notepad. So go ahead and press enter.
now this is it it's done you can uh, connect if you go with your show we see this is the pair we just added uh, let's go back to the configuration file just grab everything copy go back to your uh, to your wire guard here you are just gonna paste everything in call it whatever you want VPN one USA and press save now this is that's it so now you just go ahead and uh, press activate I'm just gonna well, I should lose the connection to the uh, to my uh, SSH as you can see the data is going up which is good we are actually connected uh, if we go back here we should see that we have lost the connection yep we lost connection let's go back and connect to the server I'm just gonna grab my password for the server uh, there's the password clear VG show we have something is happening so there's a command called watch VG show this is gonna give you real-time uh, data so you can see that it's actually uh, going up now I'm not downloading any heavy heavy stuff or so uploading so it's not really going too much up there so to see if we actually got what we were looking for uh, that would be as I said in the beginning of the video that I'm gonna try to get the IP address from my server which is based in the United States so if you go ahead and just Google Google that thing what is my IP you guys remember my IP there it is it's the same IP I'm using on my server let's see if it's actually a American IP it should be oh yeah it is here we see so that's how you create a VPN server WireGuard how you add a client to, to be able to connect and one last thing would actually be to to have um, easiest a easy way to connect from your phone and that would definitely be with uh, with a QR code so we're gonna go ahead and install and that as well so go back to the machine uh, clear the command uh, for that would be one second I could paste that up to install QR encode enter Now the second command is QR green code and the syntax you could definitely see that in the in the help section uh, what the syntax is, is for but here is the the last thing we need to change is just to the to the configuration that we created I'm sorry I'm not in the in the directory so if you go ahead there type vg1.conf Ta-da! There's the QR code, and this QR code is giving the exactly same uh, same stuff like using VG Cat VG One. This is going to be in the QR code. So when you are trying to connect from your phone, this is going to be imported to the WireGuard application. You just go ahead and press connect, and you should be up and running. All right, that's for the video. Uh, I hope I. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys got some questions answered through the video. And uh, if you need any help, comment down in the section below. I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can. Thank you for watching.